Jim. What is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. We are just two weeks away from the Survivor Series, the one night of the year where Raw and SmackDown compete against one another for WWE supremacy, but their true competition comes that weekend in the colors yellow and black and will be encased in steel as the War Games pay-per-view is beginning to take shape, and we are going to watch tonight's NXT TakeOver live with you guys right now. My name is Nick Knight. And you're about to enjoy the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's live review and reactions of this week's NXT for November the 2nd, 2018. Let's do it. <laughs> NXT fans, thank you so much for joining me. This episode of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show is brought to you guys by Audible. Audible is offering you guys 30 days free to try out their service and will give one free audiobook to fans of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show just for checking out their service. Over 180,000 titles to choose from, including some of them that you see right before your eyes right now. All you gotta do is go to audibletrial.com slash sledgehammer TV and take Take advantage of our special offer. That's audibletrial.com slash sledgehammer TV for your free 30-day trial and audio book. Nice to be back doing some NXT. I figured it's time to go back to the well, being that some of the extra shit the WWE's been throwing at us has started to wind down, and I want to enjoy the build to War Games. It is already shaping up to be one of the biggest shows NXT has ever done, and we are going to fire this thing up in just a minute. Leading into this show, we've had the debuts of both Matt Riddle and Keith Lee on the NXT roster. We've had Johnny Gargano be revealed as Aleister Black's mystery attacker which was a revelation that shook the NXT universe to its very core. We have the Velveteen Dream earning his way into a number one contendership and will be facing off against Tommaso Ciampa as he hopes to hold on to Goldie, that NXT World Heavyweight Championship, as the Dream starts to dream in gold. And it's going to be interesting to see that match is going to be fantastic. And, like I said, the awesome lead-in to the War Games matchup, changing things up a little bit this year, not having three teams of three, but two teams of four, a little bit more traditional, and I'm loving it. So let's fire this bad boy up. Let's start this episode of NXT. Woo, let's do this, gang. We got Heavy Machinery coming out to the ring. I was really big on this tag team. As soon as they debuted on the NXT roster, they got a great look. They're a couple of beefy, beefy dudes, and they can dish out the pain. Tucker Knight, Otis Dozovich, very impressive. One of my favorite tag teams in NXT right now. Went to war with the AOP a couple of times. Very, very impressive. Otis Dozovich looks like an American version of that guy from the UK. What the hell was his name? Dave Mastiff. Oh my God, that guy is a beast. Can you imagine those two guys as a team? I'm not trying to take anything away from Tucker Knight, but if you know about Dave Mastiff, that guy is a walking wrecking ball. And so is Otis Dozovich. And I think they would be even heavier machinery if you ask me. They are taking on tonight the Forgotten Sons. I'm really enjoying this team as well. Jackson Riker. The former TNA Gunner. Making his mark known in NXT. Building up his own faction. The Forgotten Sons. Look kind of like the Sons of Anarchy. A little bit reminiscent of a sanity. Wesley Blake, formerly of Blake and Murphy, Alexa Bliss's former tag team in NXT, seems to have been forgotten, I guess. Joining up with Steve Cutler, another forgotten member of tag team lore in NXT, and now to be forgotten no more. 
under the tutelage of Jackson Riker. This guy looks sick in the face, man. Steve Cutler has a broken nose, so he's wearing a funky-looking black mask. I think it actually looks kind of cool. Heavy machinery gearing up, bumping gigantic bellies. There is the bell, and here we go. It's been a while since we did some commentary. I love doing this for you guys, and I hope you enjoy tonight's show. If you do, be sure to smash that thumbs up and make sure you subscribe because we are so close to 1K, I can taste it. Just like Tucker Knight just made Steve Cutler taste that takedown. Totally in control now. Cutler gets to the ropes, forcing a break to get Knight off of his back. Both of these guys just grappling right now, trying to get the better of one another. Cutler with a nice armbar. Blind tag by Wesley Blake, trying to get the advantage now. Takes that arm wrench. Another quick tag. Cutler back in now. Focusing in now on the arms of Tucker Knight, trying to take the power away from the big man. Double knee attack from the second rope to the same arm as they continue to just wrench it. And stay locked in, zeroed in on the shoulder of Tucker Knight, who is now down to his knees, really feeling the effects. Wesley Blake in full control. Has that arm cinched in, locked in. Going to be very hard for him to take off. Needs to use his power. Tucker Knight wildly punching. Tag to Steve Cutler, double team now. Into the ropes, Sucker Knight ducks a clothesline. Double body splash, takes out both forgotten sons. He didn't forget either one of them in that takedown. Tag now to Dozovich, both of the heavy machinery have the forgotten sons up double. Power slam, wait a minute, Dozovich is taking his time. Goes into an airplane spin. Dumps Cutler on top of Wesley Blake. Very impressive display of power by Heavy Machinery. Big avalanche into the corner. Probably rebroke Cutler's nose even through that mess. Dozovich firing up now. Beating up his own meaty shoulders. Getting the NXT Universe behind him. Pumping up. Here he goes. The biggest gigantic worm you'll ever see. Into that elbow drop. Very impressive agility by this walking meatball. Dozovich has impressed me since day one. A man his size shouldn't be able to move that way. Dozovich takes down Blake now from the outside. Oh, gets attacked by Cutler. Nice, almost Russian leg sweep. Reverse Russian leg sweep. Wesley Blake tagged in now, firing away with some kicks and elbows as Dozovich is still down. Springboard off the bottom rope, knee drop across the neck of Dozovich. That'll hurt any man, no matter how big you are. You don't want to take away the man's ability to breathe. Dozovich throwing some haymakers to the midsection of Blake, pushes him away. What a clothesline by Blake! Devastating power! Being showcased now by Wesley Blake, taking me by surprise. Keeping control of Dozovich now, they focus their attack on his arms. These guys are obviously not wanting to be punched in the face by heavy machinery at all. They are taking all the power out of the upper bodies of both of these men. Cutler now in full control of the much bigger Dozovich, trying to tie him up into the ropes, continuing to work on the elbows and shoulders throughout the beginnings and entirety of this match thus far. Nice tag. The Forgotten Sons elbow drop on the side of the ring apron. Jackson Riker has got the Forgotten Sons into a well-oiled machine. Blake now looking for an arm bar. Dozovich has a grip blocking it, making it very difficult. He's going to need to use his power to get on his feet, which he is trying to do right now, trying to get back to a vertical base. 
trying to one-handed pull Blake off of the map, but he cannot do it. Blake now looks to be trying to get him to go to sleep in a triangle, but he doesn't really have it locked in. Dozovic is looking a little dozy right now. Looks to be fading. Wait a minute. Back to both feet. Last ditch effort. Dozovic has Blake up with one arm and dumps him on the back of his head. What a matchup. Dozovic determined to stay in this match. Cutler again goes for that. Rolls out of it. Tucker Knight now gets the hot tag. Bicycle kick to the face of Steve Cutler. Here comes Wesley Blake for a hip toss. Now gets sent to the outside with a clothesline over the top rope. Tucker Knight is on fire as he continues to be relentless. Sends Steve Cutler into the corner and just fires away into the midsection with lefts and rights and stomps a mud hole in him down to the mat. Tucker Knight goes in, another avalanche for Cutler. Sends himself into the ropes, changes direction, goes over the top rope, sent, going up to the top now. Cutler unaware. Rolling sent on from the top by Cutler. One, two, near three for the forgotten sons. Totally taken off guard by the agility of these mammoth men. Oh my God. Backstabber now by Cutler tonight. He has him draped across his knees. Elbow drop into the chest of Knight. This might be their chance. One, two. The Forgotten Sons almost stole this thing right from underneath heavy machinery. Wesley Blake now. Seating Tucker Knight on the top rope, tags in Steve Cutler. Cutler going to the top, looking to deliver a superplex. Right from the second rope, gets Tucker Knight over, followed up by a frog splash. That's got to be it. One, two. Otis Dozovic saves this match at the last minute. What a brutal encounter by these four men. They are laying it on the line right now. Leaving nothing. Giving everything now. Steve Cutler left in there with Knight. Small package, one, two. Knight almost stole this one. Backslide, one, two. Again, Knight retaining the advantage. What a haymaker clothesline that was. That would have made Stan Hansen crap in his pants. Holy cow, tags in Dozovic. Cutler now looks to be out of it. Dozovic has him up. Going for that finishing move. Look out, Blake pulls down the top rope. Sends Tucker Knight to the outside and Dozovic now. Getting an electric chair seated, electric chair dropped by Cutler and the Forgotten Sons are in control. Look out, Tucker Knight pushing Steve Cutler from the top rope into Jackson Riker. Dozovic pop up, power splash. One, two, count to 100. Whoa, ho. talk about pancaking a guy. That was a vicious pop up power splash. Wow, Dozovic, like I told you guys from this onset of this matchup, one of the most impressive young talents in all of NXT. This heavy machinery tag team is building a lot of momentum week after week. Beloved by the NXT universe, beloved by this guy, this team is the real deal. The tag team champions, whoever they may be in the near future, they need to have their eye because that machine is going to come and start breaking stuff down. Heavy machinery pulling out the heavy artillery for the win here. Nice superplex. They guys, oh, the Forgotten Sons almost had this matchup on many occasions. Very close, if not for Otis Dozovic saving this matchup. The key moment of this match, Tucker Knight sending Steve Cutler from the top rope to the outside into Jackson Riker. 
which allowed Dozovich one-on-one with Blake, had no chance, this power slash, my goodness. Heavy machinery finding themselves in the win column once again. I'm sure the Forgotten Sons are not going to forget this one anytime soon. Taking a look back at last week now, Candice LeRae looking good in this goth outfit, if you want to ask me. Candice LeRae skirting on the dark side of things, confronted Nikki Cross for getting involved in their personal business, telling Aleister Black about Johnny Gargano. Nikki Cross walking off, laughing. Alistair Black would come out and confront Candice LeRae himself. Why they didn't do this with a microphone, I don't understand. You know, Dusty Rhodes would be spinning in his grave, God forbid, you know, and, and forgive me for the term, rather, but it's a fact. One of the things that he used to talk about is if you got something to say, say it into the microphone. And they do that on the main roster as well. They'll be talking, blah, 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 I hate you, you hate me, and then they'll put the mic down and be like, nah. Say it! Say it! Why can't we hear what Alistair Black said to Candice LeRae? We have to read his lips. Let's hear what Candice LeRae has to say tonight. In fact, everything that's going on with my husband and myself, I'd like to keep it between us right now. You know, I have questions too. I do. Questions for Nikki Cross. Did she answer those questions? No. What did she do? She laughed in my face and she walked away. I'm here today and I'm going to ask Mr. Regal for a match with Nikki Cross. That way she cannot walk away from me. She has no choice but to face me. We'll see if she's laughing when I'm done. But isn't Nikki Cross on SmackDown Live now? <laughs> Maybe she should work on their timing a little bit. Okay, tonight we are going to hear from Johnny Wrestling. Johnny Gargano with an exclusive interview later on tonight. I can't wait to hear what he's going to say. He's been silent since the attack, since the revelation of him being the attacker. Here we're looking at Lars Sullivan, an absolute beast of a man in his own right, and the Velveteen Dream, what is he wearing? He's got like a captain's hat on. This guy is ridiculous. I love Patrick Clark. I have such respect for him, man. I remember watching him in Tough Enough, in that final season of Tough Enough that was on the USA Network, and I kind of gravitated towards the guy because you could just feel the respect that he has for the business. He used to get pissed off at that ZZ kid. If you guys watch that show, remember that ZZ cat from Louisiana or whatever used to wrestle the alligators? He used to piss off Patrick Clark just for existing and just for having a chance because if he, he felt like these guys didn't take it seriously. And you can tell by the development and where Patrick Clark finds himself now that this guy was serious from day one. And I have such respect for the guy. What a great character the Velveteen Dream has become. A little bit of gold dust in there. You could feel that gold dust vibe. A little bit of Prince. A little bit of ravishing Rick Rude. All balled into one and you get the Velveteen Dream. I'm absolutely loving it. Here we got the commercial for the 2K19 game, which I still don't fucking have, all right? I don't have it. That's why you're not seeing content. I haven't had time to go get this thing, nor have I really had the money to drop on a game that usually disappoints me. And I'm watching everybody out there having a great fucking time with this game and telling us, oh, it's the best it's ever been. And but of course it would be because I didn't get it on launch day and I'm not playing it. I will eventually, and it'll be too late by the time I do to give you guys any wrestling content, but whatever. We'll be on, on the ball for that shit next year. We'll be ready. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> this is what happens when you show me commercials. I get pissed off just because I'm seeing commercials. What do we got here? Nita Strauss! <laughs> Isn't that the girl that played and opened up Evolution and didn't she play for Mick Foley on that comedy special thing that he did? This girl can play guitar. I love chicks that can play guitar. I don't know why. Something really sexy about a woman that can rock the skin. I don't know. 
I love it. Taking a look now at Tommaso Ciampa versus Velveteen Dream for the NXT Championship at War Games. Going to be a great match, man. Do not sell Velveteen Dream short. If you are not on that train, get on the purple train right now, man, because looking at the future of wrestling. And what can, what can I say that hasn't already been said about a Tommaso Ciampa? The guy is the quintessential heel in all of professional wrestling. Nobody's doing it better than he is, not even anybody on the main roster. Tommaso Ciampa is pro wrestling. Let's go, hurry up. Oh, we're taking a look at Shayna Baszler now. What does she Shayna, say? Shayna, congratulations on your win at Evolution. She's got her little horse women on the side, minus Ronda, three of the four horse women of MMA. Match clause. Here we go. How many times am I going to have to beat down Kyrie Sane before you people start to understand how insignificant she is? <laughs> now, what's most important about all of this is that I am the first ever two-time two NXT Women's Champion. Two-time. Um, excuse me, ladies. Oh, William Regal's in the house. I love yeah, William Regal. Yeah. One of the most underrated wrestlers Absolutely. ever. There is rather an ins insignificant little thing happened, and that is, as Kathy mentioned, Kari Sane has decided to invoke her rematch cause, and so I've decided it's only the right thing to do is that that match will take place at NXT TakeOver War Games. So now we have the and women's title match announced. Because of somewhat story past, I decided to make that match a two out of three falls match. Oh, two yeah. out of three falls. Kairi yeah, Sane looking to take her treasure back. On the attack and on the hunt for the Queen of Spades, two out of three falls. Wow. That's going to be insane. Gonna, getting set for some women's action now. Dakota Kai making her way to the ring. A little bit surprised. I thought she was moved to the NXT UK division. I guess it's a non-exclusive thing, which I could get on board with. We're going to see them cross-promote NXT UK and the regular NXT. You can't complain about that. We can get to see Rhea Ripley show up on a regular edition of NXT. Tony Storm. And like we're seeing right now, Dakota Kai, who we just recently seen on the second episode of NXT UK. I was surprised to see her there. That's great, man. If it's an open agreement for them to just show up wherever they're needed, stars will be getting a lot more exposure. And we'll be seeing a lot more great wrestling, and you can't complain about that. Oh, I can't complain about this, though. Anybody who's watched my Mae Young Classic stuff knows I am not high on Tainata Kanchi. I'm not saying she's not cute. She's adorable. She's got the big baby doll eyes. She's got a great body. She's got a good look. But can she wrestle? Not that well, in my estimation. But we'll see what she brings to the ring tonight. I wish she would keep her tongue in her mouth. She looks very strange. Why? You're a pretty girl. Just be mad if you want to be mad. What is it, a nervous, like, tick? Like, ah. At least she's got her hair game a little bit better tonight. Won't be flying all in her face. There's the bell. Dakota Kai, Tainara Kanchi. Collar and elbow tie up to start this thing. And now Kanchi ends up executing a headlock. Headlock takeover rolled through by Dakota Kai, who's now got a nice arm bar. A lot of arm bars lately, man. Back to a vertical base. Pulls Dakota Kai's hair. There it is. There's that scream. Are you crazy? That's the best thing she's got. Dakota Kai caught the foot of Kanchi. Now she wants to be friends. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. This girl reminds me of Gloria from Modern Family. Oh. Arm drag takeover by Dakota Kai. Up the the nice drop kick to the face of Kanchi. Goes for the cover. One, two. Dakota Kai barely gets a two count. Barely. a different side here of Dakota Kai ever since she's had her issues with Shayna Baszler. And she learned one valuable lesson from that. Look at this. This is a mess. What is happening here? 
Kanchi messed that one up. Whoa, goes face first into the second turnbuckle, rolls her up. Dakota Kai once again almost wins this match. Kanchi looks a little sloppy once again on this night. But she loves to scream. We know that. Oh, she goes to flip up over Conti in the corner, and she got kicked in the wrist. And now Conti just Conti just kicking away very sloppily on Dakota Kai. She just keeps kicking at the wrists. Dakota Kai looks like that really, really is starting to bother her and get to her. Barely a one count as Conti now starts to take control. If you want to call it that, not really much happening in this match. She's just mushing her in the head right now. All right, finally something sends Dakota Kai into the corner. Judo flip. Keeping control of that injured wrist now. Sends Kai back into the corner and again for the same exact maneuver, but the second time it was uglier than the first. Bicycle kick to the face of Kai, sends her to the mat. One, two, kick out by Kai. Conti almost stole this one. Conchi, I'm sorry. I pronounce things the way I see them. Conchi is aggressive. Looking for the arm. Look at Kai fighting this, making Conchi really having to earn it. Got a wrist lock applied to the top of Dakota Kai. Really wrenching back on it now, flailing around like a crash test dummy. Dakota Kai's got to do something to get out of this here. She's got to use those lethal legs of hers. Try to kick this baby doll eyed broad in the face. Crowd starting to try to will Dakota Kai back into this thing as she starts to try to get back to her feet. But Kanchi sends Kai into the corner. Maintains the advantage. And has now got the arm wrapped around the top rope, trying to rip it clear from the shoulder. Dakota Kai gets out of the corner. Conti gets contact head first into the top rope. Whoa, what a... That was a crazy kick. Like a handstand back kick to the face. Took me a minute to think of what to even call that. Might have rearranged the face of Conchi. Coming back in now, delivers another kick right to the midsection of Conchi. Another bicycle kick right to the jaw. Dakota Kai firing up, hits the rings. Whoa, drive by kick right through the face of Conchi, trying to pull herself up to the top rope. Dakota Kai with that running kick to the face. Rolls Conti into the middle of the ring, and now, oh, flipping code breaker, one, two, that was beautiful, beautifully executed, I like that finisher, forward flipping code breaker to the back of Conchi, gets the win for Dakota Kai, not that impressive of a match. You guys that watch me already know what I'm going to say. I'm putting that all on Tainara. She has got to get better. She has got to get better than this. This is the best she's got. That she needs to go back to the PC and get some more training. And keep her tongue in her mouth. Taking another look now at that bicycle kick to the face in the corner. And this beautiful flipping code breaker. Absolutely beautiful. She calls it a code red. I'm digging Dakota Kai, man. She's got like a like a Bailey vibe to her. The way Bailey was when Bailey was awesome, not the Bailey we see now. Mia Yim backstage. With you getting the in contact baddie. with NXT. So how has it been here at NXT so far? 
it's literally living the dream. I get to train at the Performance Center. I get to work alongside the best of the best in NXT. And it's just, I can't even put into... Uh-oh. Bianca Belair shows up. Excuse oh, you. bumps me a yim. Do we have a problem here? Why? Why? Why are you interviewing this chick? When I'm the one that's been here busting my butt for two years, and she thinks she's just going to walk in the door, somebody's going to hand her some respect and hand her opportunity? No, what you should be talking about is the fact that Bianca Belair is on... Duh. The. Tet. And I still haven't gotten my title shot. So what you need to do is go back to wherever it is that mm. you came from. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't understand why you're so angry, especially towards me. That's not my problem. I don't know. I don't know your issues. But what I do know is that the EST has not beat the HBIC, the head baddie in charge. Uh-oh. <laughs> Girl. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I love Bianca Belair. She's got such a great attitude. I love it. Mia Yim, one of my favorites, again, from the Mae Young Classic. And when we met her down in House of Glory, she's a beautiful person. So happy to see her finally in the WWE on NXT and keep her away from the main roster. You, I, you guys know why. Both of these girls are going to throw it down. When they get in the ring with one another, it's going to be something to watch. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it live on this channel with you guys next week. Absolutely awesome. Now we're getting set to take a look at the War Games match. What are we going to see here? Oh, right now we're going to see Happy Finn. Happy Finn. Smiley Happy Finn. It's another fucking commercial for the shop zone. Ugh. War Games, man. War Games is coming up. It was so great last year. I really enjoyed it. We saw the rise of Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era. We've seen the Authors of Pain in one of the greatest matches they had down there. Roderick Strong was in that matchup. It was Sanity's swan song to the NXT universe. It was it was a beautiful match. I can't wait for this week's. What do we look... Uh, we got the King of Bros. Matt Riddle made his debut last week versus some guy. Wrestling barefoot. Still looks like Carrot Top with blonde hair, if you ask me. I'm not going to hold that against him. The guy is very impressive in the ring. Very, very over with the crowd. A lot of you guys that follow the indies probably love Matt Riddle. I don't really know much about him. I might grow to love him. I don't really like people that wrestle without shoes. Oh. King of Bros with Keith Lee. It's Cassius Ono. Manager Regal's shiny new toys. Welcome to NXT. Bro. What's Bro. Up? Man, no. I'm glad you guys are here, man. I like shiny new toys. They're, uh, they're real fun to break. Oh. Cassius Ono not happy about these indie guys coming in and taking up space on the NXT roster. Regardless. Oh. My debut, Sean White speaking. successful, Keith Lee, Matt Riddle, at NXT. Bro, please, bask in your glory, bro. Bro. I don't get him. I don't get him. Dude looks like Sean White, but thinks he's RVD or Jimmy Snooker wrestling with the no shoes. I don't get him. Very talented debut. It was a great debut against some schmaz guy. All right, so let's. I'm gonna still reserve my judgment and wait till I see him in there against a guy like a Cassius Ono. Not that Cassius Ono is really that impressive to me, anyway. Well, you indie people, you love Cassius Ono too. You know Chris Hero. This ain't Chris Hero. Cassius Ono. I don't know. We'll leave that to still be decided. The jury's still out on Matt Riddle. Once again, taking a look at the War Games match. Undisputed Era versus Ricochet. 
Pete Dunn and the War Raiders. What are we getting here? Oh, looks like we're getting a promo package. Last year's War Games, man. It was unbelievable. American Championship match. Roderick Strong's turn. I want you to relish in this right now. I mean, look at all this gold. We can't be stopped. Our time is now, and we are forever here to shock the system. War is here. Oh, oh my god, it's the War Raiders! Maro Ronaldo is the fucking man. Oh. This was great. It hurt even more when Adam Cole's name is wiped off that championship and replaced it with Ricochet. Here we go! Get high. How do you watch that and not just, I'm ready to fight right now. I want to go in a cage right now and start fighting somebody. That promo was fucking beautiful. I apologize for not being able to speak. It was compelling. I, it just drew me in. I don't know what you guys were watching, watching me, listening to this thing, but you cannot, you cannot not be hyped for that. That was flawless. Flawless. The music... The imagery, everything was perfect. War Games is going to be fan fucking tastic. Uh, looks like we're gonna finally hear from Johnny Gargano. Here we go. Let's listen in. What is Gargano gonna say? Why, Johnny? Why? That's the question everyone's asking me. I've always been very open and very honest with the NXT universe. So you ask, and I will tell. 
Alistair, you talk about a path. A path you're on. I'm on a path too. Does this look familiar? This was the path I took the night you were found laying. The end of that path leads me to Tommaso Ciampa. The end of that path leads me to righting a wrong, fulfilling a promise, and me, me, being the one to beat Tommaso Ciampa for the NXT Championship. You got in the way. It's collateral damage. It's nothing personal. I'd like to think you'd appreciate that. Seeing as you walk around here like you own the place, black mask, whoever you want, no one bats an eye. It's an excellent point. Talking about how no man is ever truly good. No man is ever truly evil. I feel bad for you. You're confused. That's sad. I know exactly who I am. I'm the good guy. I'm the hero at the end of this story. I do one thing. One little thing that some people may consider evil. And everyone freaks out! Let me calm your worries. I'm still the same Johnny Gargano I always have been. I still fight for what's right. What I've learned is, sometimes, around here, you gotta fight a little dirty. So that's why, Alistair. Now I know you probably want to kick my face off now. That's fine. I accept that. Maybe I deserve that. But after everything I've been through, I'm not scared of you. I live in a dark, dark place, Alistair. And I'm not afraid of the dark anymore. Actually, <clears throat> I'm kind of starting to like it. That look familiar? That's the same spot I left you laying. Take over war games, I leave you laying again. Absolutely chilling. Absolutely chilling words from Johnny Gargano. He's absolutely right though. Where the man is coming from is spot on. But the intensity in his eyes tells the entire story. He feels like he has been wronged by the addition of Aleister Black. Aleister Black got in his way. Johnny Gargano was on his own path. And Aleister Black just black mass kicked his way and just stepped over Johnny Gargano at every turn. Do you think he's justified? I think Johnny Gargano has full justification in what he's done. Doesn't make it right. And it makes it a little confusing that, you know, Gargano is coming off as, I'm just the same guy. Everybody should still love me. I'm just going to do things in a darker, more brutal way. I can totally get on board with that. Is this a heel turn for Johnny Gargano? I'm going to say no right now. I'm going to say no. One week from Friday. I don't think so, but I think they're definitely skirting the lines of it. And it might be something interesting to see them visit. Because this ice-cold demeanor of Johnny Gargano was very intriguing. I guess we're listening to, uh, what is this? Some really cool-looking video. Uh, Bring Me the Horizon, Wonderful Life is the NXT theme song for TakeOver War Games. Sounds pretty badass. I'm into it. Well, we have a match announcement for next week. Mia Yim will be facing the EST of NXT, Bianca Belair. That's going to be a great match. Mia Yim is fantastic. Bianca Belair has grown leaps and bounds over the last year or so since we first took a look at her, taking a look at her last year in the Mae Young Classic. I'm loving everything going on with the women's division in NXT right now. Oh, William Regal's back. We're having a singles match between two competitors from the War Games teams. And whomever wins that match 
their team will get the advantage in the War Games match at NXT TakeOver War Games. Big, big announcement next week on NXT. There will be a singles matchup to uh, decide who gets the advantage in the War Games. The participants have yet to be decided. One member from the Undisputed Era, one member from Ricochet's team. Who will it be? We'll have to find out next week as we're taking a look at my guy, man, Velveteen Dream. D-R-E-A-M is... I love this guy. <laughs> Coming out here looking like a the captain of the love boat. Hugh Hefner's coat. Captain Steubing's hat. <laughs> Survivor Series. Do you want to talk about Survivor Series? Survivor Series has no chance against this war game show, which is more often the case than not when an NXT takeover is going head-to-head -head with one of the big five pay-per-views. You don't stand a chance. They are going to give you five matches that are going to blow you away, one right after the other, and then we're going to have to sit through Survivor Series, which I don't mind. I like the brand warfare. I think it's the easiest, most interesting thing they could do, but none of it is going to top what we see right out of the gate with the championship match in NXT, with the War Games match, with the women's title match now. We still don't know what other matches are going to be added to this card. It's going to be a happening, and I can't wait to be there to see it. D-R-E-A-M is... I hope I don't get a fucking strike for this. This is better not... That's why I'm kind of trying to talk as much as I can, but you got to get into it when you feel in the dream. And if you're enjoying any of this, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you come back for more. Then I'll know that you want to see a little bit more of this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm getting ridiculous. Coming up to the main event, Velveteen Dreams got his hands full. That scream is terrifying. Here he comes, though, man. This mountain of a man. Looks like he's chiseled out of stone. A walking pile of granite. From the Rocky Mountains. My God, Lars Sullivan. I love this guy based off of his theme song alone. His entrance is fantastic. They bathe his body in red right before he makes his way to the ring. This is my favorite part. He gets in the ring, and then this camera angle is fantastic where you just see the outline of this monstrous man in black. The silhouette, the shadow just laying in wait to destroy whatever is across the ring from him. I love Lars Sullivan, and this song is badass. He is absolutely terrifying. This guy took Aleister Black to his limit. I think he could definitely give Brock Lesnar a run for his money. Brock Lesnar himself is a very huge Lars Sullivan fan. I'm surprised the Beast has time in his busy UFC schedule to even watch NXT here and there. But he is a fan, and as am I. Whoa, well, the bell rings and Velveteen Dream trying to gain an early advantage. Tried to blind him with his jacket, but ends up... Just like the rest, as Lars Sullivan is ramming his shoulders repeatedly into the Velveteen Dream. Picks up the Dream with ease and tosses him like a load of laundry. Velveteen's golden dreams may be going up in smoke right now. If he can't get past Lars Sullivan tonight, Sullivan sets him up in a powerbomb position, but the dream punches his way out of it, delivers a European uppercut, and another. 
Sullivan sends Dream into the ropes. Dream follows up with a boot to the face. And a big knee sends Lars to the outside. The Dream now with ease over the top rope takes out Sullivan to the steel ramp. Unloading now with lefts and rights to the chrome dome of Lars. Sends Sullivan shoulder first into the steel steps. The dream has come to keep his hopes alive. He does not want this to not go his way. He's pulling out all the stops. He's definitely a little bit out of his league here. Lars just pulling him out of the ring with the greatest of ease. Has the dream up outside. Oh, God, sends him side first right into the ring apron, right into the point, into the corner of the ring. Lars now stays in control as he sends Velveteen into the ring and now looks to begin his malicious attack. Evil intent is his eyes as he sends an avalanche crushing into the chest of the dream. Whoa, a thunderous blow to the chest following up that vicious avalanche. Lars Sullivan is a living, breathing nightmare. Stays on top of the Dream now, keeping him in the corner. Dream trying to show some signs of life here. Gets a knee for his efforts and is just being ragdolled around this ring by Lars Sullivan. Lars now taking his time, enjoying every minute, delivering punishment to the Dream, ripping at his face and planting him face first into the ring mat. Just toying with the Dream now as if he was nothing. Picking him up like a small child just to send him down with a right to the face. Stays on top now, locked his grip into that trapezius area. Shades of Andre the Giant right now as he's looking to rip the trapezius muscle right out of the body of the Velveteen Dream. Dream has got to get his shit together. He needs to get his game on. Goes for a sunset flip, but he is not going to bring down that big beefy man as he lifts him up with ease. And what a lariat to the face. Inside out goes the dream for a two count. Lars Sullivan is in complete control of this matchup. A dominating force in NXT, and he is showing you why. Bringing the brutality to the Velveteen Dream tonight. Now with his knee buried deep into the back as he wrenches back on the throat and jaw. Just trying to get the Dream to submit in this very unique Mission maneuver. Dream's body so long and langly, he manages to get out and back up to a vertical base. Lars sends the Dream in and over the top rope. Much like how Triple H hurt himself at the Crown Jewel, Velveteen took the same spot, the up and over the top, and finds himself on the outside, gasping for air as the man beast Lars is smiling. He's smiling and laughing, having a grand old time, just dismantling the number one contender to the NXT Championship. Putting all his weight now into the lower back, which absorbed most of the blow from that up and over to the outside. The dream looks like he's absolutely spent right now. Lars going back to the trapezius hold. I'm getting nervous here for the dream. He's got me biting my fingernails on live TV. The dream is definitely looking like he's seeing some stars right now. A purple haze comes over the eyes of the Velveteen Dream as Sullivan is just 
powering his fingers into that nerve. The NXT Universe trying to get the dream back in gear. Once again finds himself back on his feet. Jaw Jack! A jaw jacking neck breaker by the dream finally gets a little bit of offense off. But Sullivan isn't having it. Oh, right hand by the dream. And follows up with another. This might be his shot. But Sullivan sends the dream into the ropes. Nice kick to the face. Dream another one. But Lars will not go down. What a pop-up drop kick by the dream. Finally sends Sullivan down. Dream going to the top now. Missile drop kick lands on point. One, two. A near fall for the dream. Almost surprising Lars Sullivan into staying down for that three count. Dream now struggling to even move. Looks like he's going for the Dream Valley driver, but he just doesn't have the strength in his back to lift the big man. Sullivan pop up power slam. One, two, kicks out. The Dream kicks out. I don't know how this guy's even still breathing right now with the pain he has endured. The impactful maneuvers that Sullivan is pulling out of his arsenal tonight. Lars going out of his wheelhouse, going up to the top, gets a super kick to the temple. This is it. The Dream's got to go up and do something. Trying to take the advantage now. Dream trying to pull out all the stops, guys, to put down Lars Sullivan. Looks like he might be setting up for a superplex of his own. But Lars Sullivan fighting out of it, just attacking that midsection, which is just severely damaged on Velveteen. And here goes Sullivan, looks for a headbutt and barely connects. Kind of got it on the back of the dream as Velveteen was trying to roll away. He just barely made contact, not nearly enough to do any sustainable damage as the dream is up. Sends Sullivan's shoulder first into the corner using his own momentum against him. The dream gets him up, Dream Valley Driver! How the hell did he pull that off? Let out a squeal of pain as he delivered the DVD to perfection. He's heading up to the top rope now. Wait a minute, here's Ciampa. Dream to the outside, takes out the NXT champion. Goes back into the ring, wait a minute, freak accident. One, two, no, three. And the number one contender goes down to the mountain. Thanks to that despicable bastard, Tommaso Ciampa. A man that says he could care less that the Velveteen Dream is in contention for his title. This proves to me that he sees him as much more of a threat than he's letting on. Getting involved in this match, allowing him to absorb the damage that would be taken by eating the freak accident. My God. What a dastardly turn of events. That Death Valley driver, my God, came out of nowhere. The fortitude of Velveteen Dream to even pull that off. And then the Dream would see Ciampa making his way to the ring, intercept him with an attack, but it would be a, just enough of a distraction for him to end up on his back looking at the lights. Thanks to Lars Sullivan and Tommaso Ciampa. You black-hearted son of a bitch. Ciampa now making his way to the ring with a smug, disgusting look of pride on his face. Taking the fight now to the Velveteen Dream, assaulting the injured back. You 
Right hand by Ciampa. Dream. Oh, right hand by the Dream catches the champ off guard. And now sends Ciampa into a rage as he continues to unload on top of a downed Velveteen Dream. Ciampa takes his title, probably getting out of here. No, wait a minute. Drapes it in the middle of the ring. Wait one minute here. Ciampa wants to send the Dream head first into that belt. Wait a minute, Dream super kick. What is this now? Twisting DDT sends the champion head first into his precious Goldie. The Velveteen Dream finding it within him to best the champ on his night. And he's not finished yet. He's going up to the top. Oh, wait a minute now. The referee trying to stop him. We got more referees coming out to the ring now. Getting in the way. Velveteen Dream looking for that purple Rainmaker elbow drop. But the referees talk him out of it. Get him down from the top rope. He's still trying to get into the ring. An incensed Velveteen Dream. You can hear the crowd wants him to keep going. Wait a minute, Dream breaks away. He's going up. He's at the top and he flies. Purple Rainmaker elbow right into the black heart of Tommaso Ciampa. And we may be seeing the future of NXT right here and right now as the Dream is having a good old time, even though he lost tonight, holding the NXT championship in his hands. Celebrating with the fans. Ciampa is still down. The number one contender can barely stand on his feet. Yet he finds himself standing over the champion as NXT November 7th, 2018 comes to a close. My God, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. This is why we watch NXT in the first place because after all the dog shit that we have to sit through on a Monday and a Tuesday, this kind of a show cleanses your wrestling soul. It's built perfectly. You got so much anticipation with the war games coming. We had the announcement of the women's championship match. We had the furthering of the story between Ciampa and Black. We heard the reason from Johnny Gargano tonight and we had a great tag team match to kick everything off with Heavy Machinery and the Forgotten Sons. NXT is the place to be if you are a fan of the WWE. The one and only reason to truly say to stay subscribed to them on the WWE Network is to make sure you're not missing out on NXT and NXT UK as well. The other thing that we enjoy from the WWE Network is watching all the classic stuff from back in the days when WWE used to be fucking amazing. So that's worth having to, you know, pay $9.99 a month for. I heard about the tears coming and the all new features and whatever, and we'll stay on top of all that for you guys. But if, since we're talking about subscribing, the most important thing you could do tonight is hit that subscribe button right now. If you had a great time with us here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's live review and reactions of NXT on our way to the War Games pay-per-view, which you guys know we will have our preview and predictions of that and our review and reactions of that as well following the show just two weeks away. I can't wait. Make sure you drop kick that like button. This way I know to come back and keep doing NXT reviews for you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about tonight's episode of NXT. What you thought about my commentary. I want to always know if you guys are enjoying it. Because if not, why am I wasting my throat muscles on doing something you guys don't enjoy? So if I, I need you guys to give me some feedback and let me know if you had a great time watching this show. And we will continue to be bringing them to you as much as we possibly can. Thank you guys as always for your continued love and support. I got something in the air that I'm smelling and it smells like 1,000 subscribers, which is just seemingly wafting in the air of Sledgehammer TV Studios right now. We are so close and all it's going to take is an awesome wrestling fan like you to jump on board and become part of the best 
wrestling show on YouTube that the world has yet to find, and that is the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show right here on Sledgehammer TV. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is my team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the wrestling god of thunder, and the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. And his tag team partner, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue, the snowball microphone. We are so pleased to be with you for a fantastic edition of NXT. Not sitting here bitching and moaning for a good 30, 40 minutes for once, and it feels absolutely great. That, my friends, is going to do it, and we are out of here, and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show, The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Have a good night.